Water, the birthplace of life, sustainer of life, ancient highway since the first ore was carved. Since the dawn of time, man has tried to tame the power of water, to turn it to his own purpose. Sometimes he succeeds. When he fails, it can be spectacular. As history progressed, builders of ever more complex systems and machines were discovering that the more complex the system, the more things there are to go wrong. The Titanic, I think, is one of the most classic illustrations of that. Had just any number of things, just one thing been different, the disaster wouldn't have happened. She was the biggest, the most luxurious, the most expensive. Millionaires used their influence to get tickets on her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York. Then at 11.40 p.m., the fifth day out, she struck an iceberg. 1,507 souls went down to the bottom. Yet the total area of the holes in her side were only about the size of a refrigerator. What happened to sink the unsinkable ship? The killer is when the top of the bulkhead goes below the waterline, that allows the next bulkhead in the cascade to be flooded. See, so what happens, as soon as the weight of the front pulls the top of the next bulkhead below the waterline, then the water can cascade into the following bulkheads. That's the mechanical cause of the disaster. But mystery still remains. How did the iceberg rip through the double steel hull? Not very tough steel. There's no question that the plate in the Titanic could, could not be used in a ship today. But we do see linear indications that look like the seams fail. Bad rivets or bad steel? We've pulled up a couple rivets. They don't look very good. So the rivets weren't very good, and the hull plate was not very good. The steel in the Titanic's hull was far inferior to modern steel in one crucial respect. Because of its high sulfur content, it became brittle as it got colder. That meant in the icy North Atlantic, the Titanic's hull was more prone to breaking rather than bending. And new studies indicate the three million rivets that held the ship together were made badly even by the standards of the time. Whole seams zipped open when she hit the iceberg. It's hard to imagine the most luxurious ship ever built. But underneath the gold leaf and mahogany, they used bad steel and poor rivets to hold her together.